do is I'd drive down the street and hold the camera out the window and just hold the shutter button down. And so I'd get 20 or 30 photos of something as I was driving by it. And then in that process, I would come back and I'd pick out three or four of them and just layer them together to create an idea of a particular place. So this one here is the convention center downtown on 14th. That one's the Denver Center, um, Denver Center Theater. It's the the yeah, covered yeah. covered gallery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The third one down there is the Denver Art Museum, and it's got the mm -hmm. Place Oldenburg mm -hmm. um, corner. And then the, the blue one here is the Wellington Web Building, and then the the yellow one on the corner on the on the end of the wall right there is actually the DNF Tower. It's been photographed multiple times in the reflection of an office building next to it. And then this one obviously is is Coors Field. So. Um, this one does? Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Um, well, I think they're just kind of fun images that document the city and uh, document things in the city of Denver that are, that are important, relevant, and recognizable to people, but they also create um, create something that your eye can get lost in. There's, there's lots of detail in them that um, is not easily uh, avoidable. started with a mall that I used to go to as a child and actually until I was like 18 it's it's about to be torn down and I would go in there and remember have these memories of like going shopping and hanging out and being a teenager and doing what you do in the mall with your ripped jeans and stuff so and then now when I go in there there's like it's complete abandoned emptiness and so it's kind of like a part of my childhood dying but I can't photograph in there because they won't let me but um, which, one, which mall is this? The Longmont Mall, Twin Peaks Mall I'm going to sneak in there and photograph, but I haven't figured out how to do it yet. So I started with buildings outside. <clears throat> um, I don't really like to talk about where they're at because it's not really about what building it is or, or where it is. It's They're all big box stores, and um, so it's kind of a commentary on society, like the fact that you can build a gigantic structure like this, and then it's just cheaper for... Walmart or Target or whatever to build a new structure versus renovating their old one. So I think it's an interesting commentary on society. Um, I also like the idea that <clears throat> there used to be, you know, who knows how many people go through these buildings, millions, hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, and now there's, they're just empty. So um, I, I like that aspect. Uh, I've been shooting them, they're uh, really, they're able to print really large because I'm shooting them with a medium format digital camera. So I'm very interested in new topographics and that whole historical photographic movement. I'm interested in geometry and things like that, so that's kind of what really inspires me. Well, this is media. Um, I don't get cable or satellite or anything. Uh, I just get like three channels. And this was, these were taken during the primaries. And these are all newscasters, people in the media, obviously. Um, and it just struck me when I saw the newscasts that I see on the It's very severe and very not substantial. And the people that do it are just so, I don't know. Like, I watched the local newscasts, and, and all of a sudden one day, like a weather forecaster or an anchor or someone will disappear. And they pride themselves on being friends and zany and fun, and that seems to be a big selling point for the news. I don't really understand it. But when one of them disappears, you never hear about it. It's like they just disappear. And everybody goes on being zany and fun and great friends, but it's not real. I don't really understand. I don't understand a lot about Japan. Um, so I made these pieces. And these are, I'm done. I only shoot with film I will let you get. Um, except video, which is the piece of paper. Um, but this one, I shot with uh, black and white uh, film. And I experimented for a while with different exposure times. And I don't have anything against digital. I don't want you to think that I do. Please don't think that. It's a narc moment, so I just don't use it. Um, so I shot them and I experimented with different exposures. And I'm a very big fan of Bacon, you know, the painter. And if you've ever seen, it's, it's good about time to hurt people because they understand that stuff. Is <laughs> that he did that, uh, Pope Innocent, that portrait of a face, and it's dripping. And if you've ever read the history of the papacy, it's just such a great freaking painting. 
<laughs> and, and, and I wanted that effect with these humans. And so I experimented with different time exposures, and I got, and I figured out that two seconds just catches it, because their heads move, and they get distorted, but their torsos rarely move. So you'll see their neckties or their necklaces or whatever, and they're pretty defined. But their heads and their mouths and everything are very mixed up.